What's up, MHA Customs fam? Welcome back, welcome back to our channel. If you are new here, I'm Amanda. If not, welcome back. Today, you guys, I'm gonna walk you through some graduation stoles that I have been making. If you can see right here, we have been very, very busy making um, not only graduation stoles, but memorial stoles also. You guys can make really good money off of making these. Look at this. Now, I did a video about 11 months ago, okay? on how I put together a graduation stole. Uh, I could say then we were just starting out, but as you can see, we are getting better and you can get better as you go. So don't ever, don't ever be scared to jump out your comfort, your comfort zone and try something new and fun. At first, it may be, you know, it, it can be intimidating, but once you get the hang of it, you guys, it, you, you'll be, going fast in no time uh we had to do 15 grad no 15 memorial stoves i'm sorry 15 memorial stoves about a week a week or two ago and they gave us about a two week notice so i had some wiggle room in case anything was to go wrong but luckily lately the stoves that we've been purchasing and i will look that up um the store that we've been purchasing them from off of amazon i will either put it up in the video somewhere the name or I'll show it to you uh, but for right now I want to show you guys how I I don't go I don't when I first started I was going up here some of them I I did do by mistake because I didn't measure I usually measure from the neck where is it at right here I measure down to kind of how far I want my designs to start okay if you guys want your designs up here around the neck then that's fine do as you please but i prefer mine to be right where you can see them so i'm going to show you guys we're going to get into this video and i'm going to show you guys the measurements and everything and keep in mind every stole measurements are different so you need to keep a ruler um keep a measuring tape or whatever and make sure you measure how wide your stoles are okay all the way to the bottom because I, they go small up here and they get bigger as you go on the bottom so you want to make sure you, you write your measurements down so you, by the time you get to the bottom because this is how i do it i'm explaining it to you like yeah you're measuring but i go based off the bottom because it's the biggest part of the stove okay so my design is going to be a tad bit bigger than my stove on the bottom so this one probably is measuring about a little over five inches okay so i'm gonna go about and i'm gonna show you i'm gonna show you everything on my measurements i'm gonna go about five three okay so i'm gonna show you on my laptop because my my tabletop computer cracked you guys oh something heavy fell off the top of one of the shelves above my computer which i should have knew better but anyhow that's neither here or there so i'm working on my laptop so i'm gonna show you guys um and i'm gonna also i'm gonna show you guys the the sizes that i make my designs how i do them and everything and then uh, we'll go from there and i'll talk to you guys about the designs the images and where i get them from okay okay everyone so here we are um on my laptop and this part right here see this long white hold on let me click off that knife this long white rectangle right here is at oh my god this this thing is so sensitive. Okay, so this right here would be from the top of the stole where the stitch is um, behind the neck all the way down to the chest. So I have this um, at 3.2 in height. I mean, I'm sorry, 3.2 in width. Oh my gosh, 3.2 in width and 10.9, which you could go 11 in height. Okay, so 11 inches from the neck down to the chest. If you guys wanted to start there, if you wanna go up by the neck, then that's fine. Okay, so as for the design, including the background, I went on Canva and typed in blue and gold uh, background, and then I just scrolled until I picked one to my liking. What I did do is when I upload it, a lot of times Canva doesn't allow you to upload just one image at a time. So I upload two, but I make sure I keep them spaced out. That way when I upload them in Silhouette Studios, I can erase the one I don't want. Okay, so moving forward, I played around with the design, which where this right here is the bottom of one side of the stole. So this right here is top and bottom of one side of the stole, right? This one over here is gonna be bottom and let's get my top in here. 
and the top to the other side of the stole. Now what I did was I played around with my design to where, if you guys can see, I made sure it was white right here on this side and white right here on that side. Okay, so when I upload my picture frames, I went into Canva and again, I uploaded two at a time. I typed in gold picture frames. You can type in whatever color you're looking for, gold, white, um, silver. I did some silver ones, I did some white ones. I just upload again, two of them at a time. Uh, and then I, I go into remove BG and I remove the background and then I download from Remove BG and then I open it back up. I click on it after it downloads and then I just drag it into uh, Silhouette Studios, okay? So I got all my designs, my, I mean, I'm sorry, all my images, the, the picture frame and the background from Canva. And if you're doing like memorial stoves, you guys, you guys can find like doves and all that good stuff. You may need Canva Pro. I do have Canva, Canva Pro, uh, but you, they do give you some designs you don't have many to pick from if you don't have canva pro so yeah i just figured i'd let you guys know that a lot of times you get more uh, better designs to choose from if you have canva pro okay you guys so now that i talk you through how to size the uh stole from the neck on down to the chest we're gonna go ahead now and get to putting it together so let's go okay you guys i almost forgot so you're gonna for your one side of your stole again remember this is just me measuring um the neck the top behind the neck part where the stitch is from there on down to the chest area okay that then i start my images but this is the top side the top part for one side of the stole and then this is the bottom okay so for the top design that is 19.0 okay in height and we have it, this one I think is a tad bit bigger. Yep, 5.5 in width, you guys. Um, I did do some at 5.3 in width, but again, it varies. It all depends on how wide the bottom of your stole is. Okay, so this is top and bottom of one side. So you would need one 13 by 19 sheet for each side of your stole, okay? So this will be the, the right side, and then this will be the left side, okay? And again, they're all the same size in height and in width. So you're gonna need one 13 by 19 sheet per each side, okay? And this is a top and bottom as well. Okay, you guys, I didn't wanna leave that out. I am so sorry, cause I almost forgot. So that's what you should get once printed and once you overlap, okay? Which I will be walking you guys through that uh, in a bit and shortly. Okay, so this is what you should get. This is what you should look like. Okay. All right, you guys on to the next step. All right. Okay, everyone. So I lay the design down first. All right. I lay it down and then I'll show you how I do the neck part. This part right here. Okay. So with the stole, um, I usually I'm going to go ahead and crease it. I mean, not crease, I'm sorry, press this off camera because I don't like the wrinkles in there. Okay, so I will press this off camera and then I'll be back and I'll show you how I place the stole on the design. Okay, everyone, so I pressed the wrinkles out. I only left this um, on the heat press for about five seconds. You don't want to leave it on there too long. All right, let it cool down. Okay, and then um, you're going to have your heat resistant tape. Okay, and I have to, I like to make sure I pay attention to the bottom uh, because you wanna make sure that it's enough room to cover the whole bottom of the stole. So I like to just lightly center it, okay? Figure out where I wanna place it. That looks pretty good. A lot of times you can kind of see the design through the stole so you know if it's, you know, centered or not. But I just put it in the middle, okay? And then I just start in the middle again with my heat resistant tape and just start taping it down. Now I been lately uh, using quite a bit more tape than I normally would. And that's just because I wanna make sure it stays intact. You don't want no ghosting when you're doing these. So even though sometimes I use the adhesive spray, um, I, I didn't use it on I did some memorial stoves. I had to do like 15 memorial stoves and 
I shook the spray and everything and I sprayed it from a distance, but I don't know. I kind of got scared because it looked like it left like little like spray marks or something. So I, I haven't used it since. So I just figured I'd just take my stole to my image down really, really good with a nice amount of tape. All right. So I'm just going up. Okay. All right. Oops, I almost lost y'all. All right, I'm just going up with the tape all the way to the top. These are um, really nice to invest in you guys because you can really, really make some good money off selling graduation stoles. And depending on how much you pay for your graduation stoles, because you know you got a budget, uh, what you pay for the stoles, your ink, your paper, and all that good stuff. Um, some can go for $20, some go for $25, some go for $30. And I'm almost certain the ones that go for $30 is because they're paying a bit more for their stoles. Okay, so now for this part, I'm gonna show you guys, I just flipped it. You guys see me flip it? And I'm gonna show you the corner. Or I mean, not the corner, I'm sorry, the top. So for the top, I flip the stole over. Okay, you see this? And get it as flat as possible. All right, and then me, because I, I said in my previous video, this room tends to get hot. So I'll just take a towel, crease my design back to how good I want it. Okay, to the line, you can go a little bit over up to you then I just take some scissors and I cut this part off okay be careful that you don't cut the stole and then I just tape it down if my camera's moving and wobbling you guys I truly apologize this table is not sturdy at all can't wait to get a new one Okay, so now that we have one side done, this is how it's gonna go on the heat press, okay? All right, so I'll show you guys that part. We'll be back. Okay, you guys, so you can do your sublimation stove from 385 degrees. I believe that's what I did the ones last year at 385 um, to 400 degrees. I'm pressing these at 400 just because my machine was already on and the last thing I did was sublimation 400 degrees and this is going to be a light press so so i start from the back right because when you do a lot of sub uh, when you do a lot of these uh, a lot of these stoves if you're using a sub paper then yeah you're going to run through a lot of butcher paper i ran out of the 13 by 19 paper so i mean of the blanks galore so i had to go back to the a sub but blanks galore you don't need you don't need a uh, butcher paper over it, okay? So I just lay it like this flat and I have my, um, you guys can see over here, I have my mug press sitting right here so it doesn't hang off or anything and I have a just a straight layout, okay? All right, you guys, here we go. First press, 60 seconds and I think I told you, I'm not sure, but it's a light press, okay? Not a firm, light, light press. All right, I'm gonna let it count down and then I will be back when it's five seconds. Okay, everyone, here we go. And I don't never let my heat press pop open. I always hold it and open it myself. I always hold it, okay? And you wanna make sure with your butcher paper, the ink part, you do not let it touch your, your stove. Please don't. Okay, so then I just like moving it to the front. And be careful, there's no ink that's gonna get in the way of the second press. All right, and then you wanna always make sure that the end, the bottom of your stole, let me move you guys over, that you feel where the bottom of your stole is to make sure that gets pressed because you can accidentally ha have it hanging off and it will not, it will not be pressed. So just be careful with that, okay? So now I'm flipping my butcher paper over so the ink part is facing the back. All right, and I'm leaving just a little bit of the design that's already pressed on the heat press, okay? All right, here we go, second press, you guys. And then I just like to take this off right away. I don't know why, it's just a habit. I just try to make sure. 
it's okay <laughs> that it isn't messing up, okay? Because a lot of times, like I said, you can come across the wrong stoves and I'll explain uh, what I mean by that uh, as soon as we get done with this press, uh, we can discuss what I what I mean by you can get some stoves that are not fully, uh, how do you say, coated with the sublimation, with the sublimation, whatever coating that they use to uh, make sure you can sublimate on these things. So I will be back when this counts down to five, you guys. All right, here we go. And then I just throw everything on the floor, especially if I have like a lot of them. All right. If I have a lot to do. Oh, wee, look at that. Hot. Came out really, really good, you guys. Just taking all the tape off that's on here. Came out really good, y'all. All right. Okay, I got all the tape. Okay, everyone, this is the second side. Um, I just followed the same steps for the second side of the stove as I did the first. Okay, my camera didn't capture that. It was, I don't know, it was on photo. I don't know why. It jumps back and forth on its own. Okay, so this is the first press. Remember, no ink. I may turn this paper over because, hold on. See, there's ink coming across right here. So I want to make sure that don't, so I'll just flip it. Nope, this way. I don't want that ink on my, I don't want that ink on my, um, my Teflon cover. Okay, so right here, I'm putting, I'm leaving a little bit of the image that got pressed. But remember to always feel at the bottom to make sure your uh, bottom of your stole is getting pressed as well. All right, second press. No ink, we don't want no ink. Um, we'll go this way. Nope. Hold on. All right, there we go. Flip it. I don't want no ink touching my second press. So I got I got it covered pretty good. Okay guys, here we go, second press. All right, and then I take this off. Okay. Okay you guys, I'll be back when it beeps, okay? Okay everyone, so this is what it looked like. Came out really, really good. I am so happy with the results. Okay. Oh, and for the images, you guys, um, I try to make them about three inches wide. You can make them as tall as you like, but I try to stay within the three inch. Um, these ones I did big on you know, just because I wanted them like that real big off the uh, stove, off the, yeah. So I wanted the corners off the stove. I wanted them real big. So I did, you know, I just made them as big as I liked to my liking. But the original size, if you want them in the middle, it would be like three inches. Okay, why for a design. Now, speaking of stoles, this is what I wanted to talk to you guys about. Okay, be careful where you get your stoles from. This one, we could not use because, if you guys see that little orange circle, see that circle? It's from the front and the back. So we could not use this, okay? Now let me show you another, something else that had, this is what I mean by ghosting. You see how it is right here? That's ghosting. Somehow my image moved, I don't know how, but as you can see the difference, this is clear, this is not, okay? So that's what I mean by ghosting. And this is what I mean by it's not your fault sometimes. Do you see that big old white line? Now you guys just see me press a whole stove. And I did everything step by step, and I didn't do nothing different with these ones, but it's a whole white line. I ordered 20, a pack of 20 of these when I did these memorial stoves, and just about all of them were ruined because I had white lines coming in the design, 
in practically the same spots. So, if I were you guys, check the ratings, um, look at what people say, you know, under the reviews. I'll, I'll, I'm gonna give you guys the store that I purchased these ones from. Now, I did have maybe two out of 15 that had a light, light line that you could barely tell was there. So it was still usable. But if it was wide, like the one I just showed you, like that, nah, you can't fix that. You, that's, you can't fix, you can't fix that at all. So, okay guys, all right, so I'm gonna put the store up here somewhere, and then if you guys liked this video, if it was very helpful, if you guys enjoyed it, please don't forget to like, share, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and I will see you all in the next video. Stay blessed, bye.